In this lesson, we're going to look at the different types of governments. Uh, what are the elements that make up each one? And why people organize in these ways? One of the oldest forms of government is a monarchy. When the ruler dies, power automatically passes down to one of the children or close relatives. So we are talking about kings, emperors, queens, um, sultans in different parts of the world. In its traditional form, monarchs ruled claiming that their power was by divine right, that they were chosen by God to rule. And so you could not question what they did. To do so would be to question God. Modern monarchy is far more benign. Great Britain's Queen Elizabeth is the symbolic leader of the country, but the true power of the country is in the hands of the Parliament and the members of the House of Commons and the Prime Minister. That brings us to our next example, which is uh, democracies and republics, where leaders are elected. In a democracy, government power comes from the will of the people people decide either directly or indirectly what's going to happen. Probably the earliest example of democracy is 5th century Athens, um, where the word democracy comes from, which basically means rule by the people. In Athens they practiced direct democracy, which means that people voted for everything. But they were a much smaller uh, population just the city-state of Athens, and in that case even just the male citizens were the ones who would vote. Voting, of course, is one of the key characteristics of what makes democracy so appealing, is that we get to express our opinions through voting. Ancient Rome is an excellent example of a representative democracy the citizens, and again we're talking specifically about male citizens, would vote for representatives, either tribunes or senators. These are the people who would make up the Roman Senate, and they were the ones who actually governed the people. Our own modern U.S. government is based very much on the model set by the Roman Republic. So if you take a quick look at this graphic, you'll see the difference between direct democracy and republic. In the case of direct democracy, everyone is voting and participating all of the time on every issue. So this is something that is ideal for very small groups like the Greek city-states. Republic is more ideal for larger countries like the United States where we have elected representatives who actually do the process of legislature, legislation, making laws, um, governing and voting on things for the constituents that they represent. So if monarchs don't have total power anymore and not every government in the world is uh, some form of democracy, what's the alternative? One of them is totalitarianism also known as dictatorship, where one person holds total power, much like a monarch did back in the old days, but without the family connection. This is probably the sort of image that we associate with dictatorship and totalitarianism. Again, remember, called totalitarianism because the ruler has total and absolute power. Many dictatorships like to play up the power of the military to show their strength, um, to show the power and the ceremony associated with it. North Korea's Kim Jong-un is a good example of a modern-day dictator. So we've looked at power concentrated in the hands of a single person, uh, an old-time monarch, or the modern dictator power distributed among many people, as in democracy or republic, what about power concentrated in the hands of a few people? That is an oligarchy. 
so the few who hold power there's got to be a reason or a way that they're able to do that and in many cases it's because of wealth or uh, control of business so in the 19th century businessmen industrialists were seen as oligarchs in the United States they were accused of corruption for bribing or buying politicians to make decisions in their favor. Theocracy may seem like a very outdated form of government. Here we have the example of Egypt. Theocracy is where religious leaders have political control. But it still exists today. Following the fall of the Shah and the revolution of the late 1970s, Iran became a theocracy. There is an Iranian president who is elected, but he has to make his decisions based oftentimes on the influence and the approval of religious leaders. Religious leaders have a lot of power and influence in a country like Iran today. And finally, what if we just had no government at all? What if no one was in charge? That would be anarchy. Some people associate anarchy with absolute chaos and no control. Anarchists will say that it's not chaos. It is a group of people who decide to get along with each other and not rule or control anyone and just let everybody do their own thing. It's very idealistic and probably not very realistic. It's the idealism of anarchy that encourages people to go out and protest. For example, the Occupy Wall Street movement. But again, when people, large groups of people, live together, there have to be rules. There, have to, there has to be organization. And that's why we have government. So what should you know at the end of this presentation on the different types of, of governments? First of all, you should be able to identify each type and what's important about it. What are the characteristics of each government type? Know the difference between direct democracy and a republic. When would direct democracy work? When would republic be the better choice? Know the difference between an absolute monarchy and when absolute monarchy existed? and constitutional monarchy. What are the characteristics of modern monarchy today? That would be constitutional. Be able to give specific examples of each different government type. Make sure that you put your notes in your interactive notebook. Use Cornell notes. Those go on the right side of your notebook. Any drawings or charts or graphics that you write down, those go on the left side. If you want to, you can replay this and look at a specific slide to review.